Man, good m hello and thank you for viewing in on our Bible study on today. We, we bless the name of the Lord on today as we have a moment of prayer. Father, we thank you again to be able to study thy word. We pray that you would continue to touch our hearts and our minds to live according to the way you would have us to live, God. We just thank you and we love you for everything. Open up our hearts and our minds for more un understanding on today. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray and amen. Again, thank you for tuning in by Facebook, YouTube, to our Bible study. Um, we pray that everyone had a blessed Thanksgiving and that you got, got to enjoy family and friends and had a great time uh, enjoying all the food and festivities. Always keep in mind how blessed we are and how God has really blessed us and be thankful unto him. Amen. So as we continue in our Bible study in, in the book of Judges, chapter 5. Um, so we, we know, let's just kind of recap a little bit, that, that, that God has raised up judges, Moses, Joshua, they've all died, and now God raises up judges to, to kind of lead the people of Israel. And, and as, as he leads them, these judges come, the people of Israel do all right, as long as these judges are alive. But as, as one dies, <clears throat> passes away, then they start to rebel and go back to their old ways, and then God raises up another judge. And so he has this lady here by the name of, De of Deborah. And she's here to be a, a, a judge for the people to help them. And so here in chapter 5 it says, Then sang Deborah and Barak, the son of Abinam, on that day, saying, Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel when the people willingly offered themselves. Now the children of Israel have, have been have been having a, a war with, 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 with the group of people that have made war against them. And because God was on their side, and because God intervened on their behalf, they were able to come out victorious. So Deborah and Barak started singing this song. And it's just a song that, that, uh, that, uh, 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 that uh, all throughout scripture, you will see that when, when, when God would intervene on the behalf of the children of Israel, uh, 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 they would always sing a song of praise unto God for what he's done in their lives and how he's helped them to overcome. And my brothers and sisters, that's the way we should be. When, whenever God is on our side and God has helped us become victorious in something that we're dealing with, we ought to have a praise unto God because we would know that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, what would have happened to us? So they, they, they sang this song. And, and if I can bring back to your remembrance, you remember when we were children uh, uh, in the Baptist church, they, they used to have what they call BTU on Sundays. And, and on those Sundays, we, we would learn to sing the songs about Pharaoh's army got drowned in the Red Sea. And, and we would sing that because the children of Israel, when, 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 when Moses led them out of bondage, out of, out of Egypt, and, and they got to the Red Sea, and, 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 and the Red Sea divided where they could cross over. And then when Pharaoh pursued, it was in the Red Sea, and the waters over, overtook them. So they always sang this song of praise, and they taught that to us, that whatever you do, you ought to have a song of praise in your heart for God. And so and all through Scripture, you will see when God intervenes on the children of Israel's behalf, they had songs of praise. And here is another example of that song of praise with Deborah and Barak. So, so it says, in verse 2, it says, Praise ye the Lord for the binging of Israel. So, so, so these people that have done wrong to Israel, God steps in and, and, and avenges this for Israel. And when the people willingly offered themselves that they were happy to go and fight, happy to go out and, 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 and do things uh, 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 because they knew that God was with them. And so here we are. He says, says let's listen to how, how uh, they, they started to sing this song. Hear, O ye kings, give ear, O ye princes. I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praise unto the Lord God of Israel. So, so this is how they start the song out. And they're telling people, you ought to listen. As they're going back, they're being triumphant. And they're telling you, listen to this, you princes of Israel, what God has done for them. And it says, in verse number four, it says, Lord, when thou wentest out of Seir, when thou marchest out of the field of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens dropped. The clouds also dropped water. 
The mountains melted from before the Lord, even that Sinai from before the Lord God of Israel. So it says that this is what was happening as God went forth and marched, how, how things start to happen. Because our God that we serve is a God that's over everything. Nothing has uh, dominion over God. He has dominion over everything. And so it says, it says uh, 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 the earth trembled and the heavens dropped. The clouds also dropped rain, uh, dropped water because the presence of God was going forth. And this is what they're saying. It says, so it says, the mountains melted from before the Lord, even that Sinai from before the Lord God of Israel. So everything that was in his presence had to become a, 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 a subject unto him. And so that's the way we should be, is that, that we are subject unto God, that, that, that he is our Lord, and, and we should do whatever he has for us to do. So look, look at this as we go forward more. In the days of Shemgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were unoccupied, and the travelers walked through the through the by through byways. The inhabitants of the villages ceased. They ceased in Israel until that I Deborah arose, that I that I arose a mother in Israel. Okay. So what it's saying there is this: that in the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael. That, that these highways were unoccupied because the children of Israel did not travel by the normal highways and everything because the Canaanites were there, the Philistines were there, and so they, they were afraid of them because they would attack them. So they didn't travel. They said they were unoccupied by us. And the travelers walked through highways. They went round about. They found other routes to take because they did not want to uh, have to in encounter with the Philistines and the Canaanites. So, so they, they, they went round about. And so, you know, uh, 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 until, and then Deborah said, until I arose, until God raised Deborah up. And she said, I am to be a mother in Israel, uh, uh, a mother that would, would lead, help lead them, guide them, and keep them. Because God raised her up. And when God raises you up, then nobody can go against what you're doing because God placed you in that position of authority. He placed Deborah here. And it says in verse number seven, and the inhabitants of the villages ceased. They ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, arose, that I, that I arose a mother in Israel. So they, they, they didn't even want to go in the villages and they stayed away because of fear. But God brought her forth. And one thing that tells me is my brother and sister that whenever God needs his people to do something, he's going to have somebody that will rise up and lead his people. And so as we go forward here, and, and, and the reason that, that, that the children of Israel was in this strait, the reason this was happening in verse 8 leads us into why. He says, look, look what it says here. It says, they chose new gods. This is why the children of Israel was always in trouble with God, because he would bless them, and then they would turn their back on God and start chasing after these uh, false gods, these idols, and every, everything like that. And so this is the reason they were in the trouble that they, they were in, because they started doing this. It says, they chose new gods, and, and then was war in the, in the gates. Was there a shield or spear among 40,000 in Israel? So, 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 so as they start to chase these other gods, things start to happen to them. See, so you see, when you start going after other gods, when you start paying attention to uh, other gods, giving praise and worship to other gods, following them, you can be sure things are going to happen in your life. Things that, that probably never have happened. But things will start happening. Look what it says. Look what it says here. It just says, and they offered themselves, uh, 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 it says, they chose, was there a shield or a spear among them? And the thousands in Israel, they had nothing to protect themselves with. Nothing. They did not need anything to protect themselves when they had the presence of God with them. But now because they chose to follow after other gods, they, and, and the war came upon them, people started to attack them, they had no way to protect themselves. My brothers and sisters, as long as you have God with you, Scripture says, if I be for you, that's more than the whole world against you. So, 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 as long as they had God with them, and they followed God, they didn't have to worry about anything. But as soon as they turned their back on God, things started a different way for them. So this was their problem that they had. And so, so as we look here, it says, 
It said, and, 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 and they ro and rose up Deborah. See, there was nobody to lead them at that time because they followed these idol gods. So a champion, a person that could lead them, here, here she is, Deborah. Uh, 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 and so we have to be careful that we don't let idols and things like that start to influence or get in between us and serving God. Because when we do then, the Bible says our God is a jealous God and that, that he, he will not have no other gods before him. So when we start going and serving other gods and looking unto them, you can be sure that, that something's going to happen in your life. Things are not going to go as you expect them to. So as we go forward here, it says in verse number nine, my heart is toward the governors of Israel that offer themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye the Lord. Now this, 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 this is Deborah speaking. She said, my heart is toward the governors of Israel that offer themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye the Lord. Speak ye that ride on white asses Ye that sit in judgment and walk by the way. So he says, so she says, her heart is with them because they get, the people realize how they had erred, gone the wrong way. And then they offer themselves willingly. They were willing to go forward and, 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 to, and to fight and to make things right with God. And so it says, they, verse number 11, it says, they that are delivered from the noise of orchards in the places of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. So it says, so he says, so she says, she says, the people that was delivered from the archers in the place. So the, the archers are like the people shoot the arrows and, and they would shoot the, the arrows at them. And he, he delivered them from the noise of the archers in the places of drawing water where they would go and get water that they would come and, 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 and would, would be able to get the water and everything and wouldn't be afraid of the archers. So they're singing this song. They're, they're everywhere they go, they're telling people about the goodness of God and what God done for them. They didn't give credit to nothing else because they had no weapons to fight for themselves, but God fought for them. And my brothers and sisters, when God blesses us in our lives, we ought to be the same way. We ought to give him the credit and we ought to tell somebody somewhere along this Christian journey, if it had not been for the Lord, on my side. You see, you see, you see, everything we do is because God is on our side. When we wake up in the morning, God is on our side. As we go throughout the day, God is on our side. And we ought to be sure to tell people of that. And so this is what Deborah and, and Barack, when they're singing this song of praise unto God, everywhere they go, they're telling them, it says, uh, 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 awake, awake. Deborah, awake, awake, utter a song, arise, rock, and lead thy captive, captivity captive, thou son of Abinam. So, 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 see, this is a song that they're singing. And it says, and so she tells Barak, she says, and you live captivity. Now, if we look in Ephesians chapter, chapter 4 and verse number 8, we'll see there in that when, 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 when God, when, when, when Jesus was crucified, and it said he went down into the depths of hell and he preached a revival and he led the captivities free. He brought them back. That means those that was in, cap in, in captivity, he led them to freedom. When Moses went down into Egypt, the, the people, the children of Israel, it was in bondage. They were captives down there, but he led them out. And so this is a song of praise of what God can do in bringing you out of being captive. Now, my brothers and sisters, that's why we ought to all, yeah, that's why we ought to have a song of praise in our heart. Because when, when the devil has us, when he has us bound and we're not on the Lord's side, but when we hear the word of God and that word of God brings us out of, of being a captive of the devil, we ought to have a song in our heart. We ought to have a song in our mouth that we tell everybody. I, I, I remember the old, 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 old saints used to sing this song and they would say, oh yeah, they would, they would say, they said, um, if, uh, 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 they would sing about if, if anybody want to know who I am, just tell them I'm redeemed. See, see, all these, yeah, that used to be, that was how it used to be, but now I'm redeemed of the Lord. So, so they had this song of praise when they brought him out. And the verse number 13, it says, Then he made him that remained have dominion over the nobles among the people. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. So, so she's saying, See what the Lord done over the nobles, this woman, Deborah. And, 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 and had had a dominion over the mighty because she stood up her and Barak and led God's people. And when you lead God's people, God will give you a power. God will give you authority to do what he wants you to do. And they stayed true to that. 
And it says in verse, verse number 14 as we go forward here, it says, Out of Ephraim was there a root of them against Amalek. After thee, Benjamin, among thy people, out of America, came down governors, out of Zebulun, they that handled the pen of the writer. And they made, these people came and they made notes of everything. That's where we should be, my brother and sister. Somebody, as, as we go forward in life, somebody ought to be able to pass the story along. Ought to be able to tell those that come behind. You remember when they, when they, when they, when the children of Israel <clears throat> was when they come out of the bond, when Moses led them out of Egypt, God told them, you know, you rehearse this stuff in their ears. You tell them about, was it, write it on the doorpost, write it on here. Tell them about the goodness of God. That's the way we ought to be as we grow in life. When we talk to our children and our children's children and children after that, the the, the next generation, tell them about the goodness of God. So as we move along here, verse number 15. And Prince of Issachar were with Deborah. Even Issachar and also Barak, he was sent on foot into the valley. For the divisions of Reuben, there were great thoughts of heart. And, and so he says, so Issachar, these people were with Deborah. And they helped. And Barak was sent on foot into the valley for the divisions of Reuben. There were great thoughts of heart. And he says, why abodest thou among the sheepfolds to hear the bleeding of the flocks? For the division of Reuben, there were great searching of heart. So he said, why do you want to stay in there? Come with us. Come with us. And Gilead abode beyond Jordan. Why did Dan remain in ships? So what they're saying is, these people did not come and help them fight these, these different uh, 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 tribes. Uh, 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 uh. They did not come and help out and, 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 and help. They asked, why, why would they do that? Why, why would you not come and help? Reuben, why did y'all stay, why did y'all stay in, in, into the valley? Why did you stay with the sheep? To hear the bleeding of the flocks? And Gilead abode beyond Jordan. Dan remained in the ships. They didn't come and help. Asher con continued on the seashore and abode in his breaches. They didn't come and help and fight. And so they said, why, why did you do this? Why did you not come help your brother? Oh, but here in verse 18, Zebulon and Naphtali were people that jeopard their lives. Those tribes, they came. It says jeopard, that mean they jeopard. That mean they jeopardize their life. They come to help fight. And, 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 and they lies unto the death in the high places of the field. They came and fought. But these other tribes did not help out. The kings came and fought. Then fought the kings of Canaan and Tanakh by the waters <clears throat> of Megiddo. They took no gain of money. They fought from heaven. The stars in, and, and stars in their courses fought against Sisera. So, 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 so see, here they are. They come in and they're, they're going to fight. And the tribes, uh, 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 they sing in the middle of the song. They're talking about the, the tribes that helped them, the praise in them. And these that didn't, and 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 and, and so they they're there, and they're saying they're saying that uh, they took no uh, Megiddo took no gain of money, and they they fought from heaven. The stars in their courses fought against it. So so what they believe is that when the presence of God was with them and they was fighting, everything lined up perfectly for them. They say even the stars in heaven they lined up right just for them, and that lets us know that how God has dominion over everything. Nothing has dominion over God. He's over everything. He made everything and everything lined up just right for the, the children of Israel when they went to war. The ones they needed to fight with them, they all came. Everything worked out for them. Oh, my brothers and sisters, that's the way it is in our lives. When, 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 when we get on the Lord's side, things just seem, you know, sometimes we just wonder how things just seem to fall in place for us and, and doors start opening. Things that was going on, everything starts to, to fall in place and we wonder, yeah, oh, look how the God, God can work in our lives. When we line up with the word of God, great things start happening in our lives. And so here they are. They send the stars in heaven found their course, and they went ahead to fight. So, so it said they fought from heaven. The stars in their, in their courses fought against Sisera. The river of Kishon swept them away. And so as they defeated them, this river just come through. This body of water just washed them away. And because that ancient river, the river of Kishon, oh, my soul, that has trodden down strength that trotting down strength, that it just washed them because God has power 
and he has dominion. And he was able to make that river just wash him away. It says, then were the horse hooves broken by the means of the prancing. The prancing of their mighty ones. So you know how they have those horses out there. They can make them prance with their feet and everything. All of that was broken because of the power of God. Because God was with Barak. God was with Deborah as they led the children of Israel. And it says, Curse you, Barak, said the angel of the Lord. Curse you, bitterly, the inhabitants thereof. Barak, it says, the angel of the Lord said, Curse you. And when God curses something, Nothing good is going to come out of it. Angel of the Lord said, curse you. And curse you bitterly, the inhabitants thereof. So the people of there, they were cursed also because God said so. And because they came not to help. Look, look why they were cursed. They came not to help, not to, not, came not to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. So you didn't come out here to help God's people. So, so the angel of the Lord told him, you're cursed, and the inhabitants are cursed because you didn't fight on the Lord's side. And my brothers and sisters, that's why we always want to be on the Lord's side. Here, this, this group of people, they were cursed because they did not help with the, the Lord's people fight. So he says, and blessed above women shall be Jael, the wife of Heber, the Canaanite be. Blessed shall she be above women in the tent. So this woman, this woman, blessed above women shall the wife of Jael, of Heber, the Canaanite, be blessed. And, and so Sisera, this guy, that came and made war against the children of Israel. And, 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 and he came and made war. And he, as the battle was going on, he saw them being defeated. And as they were being defeated, he escaped. Because he knew they would kill him also. So, so he escaped. And he escaped to this woman here. Uh, the wife of, of heaven. The Canaanite. Jael. Uh, 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 he asked. And he asked her for water. Look at 25. He asked water. She gave him milk. She brought forth butter. And a lordly dish. She, she, she played up to him like she had great respect for him. And, and she was giving him the best of what she had. And she put her hand to the nail. And so, so, so uh, uh, he's there eating and drinking water, thinking that she's a, in, uh, she's a friend to him. In actuality, she was an enemy to him. But he did not recognize this uh, uh, because, because the way she received him in. And I just believe because the Bible says that she was blessed because this is what God, the angel of the Lord, told her to do. That he would feel comfortable coming around you because he's trying to escape, so she made him feel comfortable. And when she got him in there and she gave him all of this, scripture says in verse 26, it says, she put her hand to the nail and her right hand to the workman's hammer. Amen, so, so she got a nail and she picked up a hammer. He, he's landing, he's not even thinking that he's in any danger. Because now this is the man that had made war against God's people. See how God worked. And with the hammer, she smote Sesra. She smote off his head, and when she had pierced and stricken through his temples, so she hit him with it. She hit him with his head with it, knocked him down, and then she took that nail and the hammer, and she drove that nail through his temple. And he was stuck there because the nail went through. And at her feet, he bowed. That means he fell. He lay down. At her feet, he bowed. He fell. Where he, where he bowed, there he fell down dead. And because she did that, he fell dead right at her feet. God got the victory. See, he thought he had escaped getting away from what he had done. But God got the victory. My brothers and sisters, when you do God's people wrong, you might get away for a little while. But just be sure, you can rest assured that one day, a reckoning day is coming when you mess with God's people. Scripture says that uh, 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 even the preachers, they says, uh, uh, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. See, when you make war against the people of God, you got to know that they got a God on their side that will fight for them. So here, here we are. And the mother of Sesra looked out of a window and cried through the lattice. Why is, 
Why is his chariot so long and coming? So his mother's looking out. See, see what they had here, they thought the Canaanites and the Philistines, they thought that, that the children of Israel would be no, no object for them to overtake. They thought that the weeping and, 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 and crying would come from the children of Israel, but that was not the case. God turned that thing around, and, and, and now the Canaanites and the Philistine women, they were weeping because they had lost their loved ones, their, their husbands and fathers and sons. They were the one that was defeated. And so here this man's sister, his mother's looking for him. She's up looking out and wondering, where is he at? Why is it taking so long for him to come home with these prancing horses being victorious? But that was not the case. She did not know her son was dead. And, and look at this. And look at this. Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tarry the wheels of his chariots? So she's questioning, what is, what is going on? He should have been back by now. He should have rolled in high and mighty. But she did just not know that God had taken care of her child. And look at what it says. It says, her wise ladies answered her. Yea, she returned answer to herself. Have they not sped? Have they, have they not divided the prey to every man a damsel or two? To Sisera, a, a, prey, a prey of the ivory's color. So she's asking, well, have they not done this? Divided everything up, the spoils of war? Have they not divided it all up? Because when, the, when they would have make war, they would have spoils, whatever they gained by overtaking people or defeating them. They split it up amongst themselves. And she thought he should have. And so, 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 but the battle was not how, did not end how she thought it would. She just knew. They thought. They just knew, oh, we're going to beat them now. Oh, but my brothers and sisters, the presence of God was with them. And when the presence of God, uh, 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 when you hear people say, or you see in Scripture, when you see the word Emmanuel, that means God with us. And so God was with them, they, so they could not be defeated. And he says, he says, look here for the last verse. He says, so let all thine enemies perish. This is the last part of the song. So let all thine enemies perish, O Lord, but let them that love him be as a son when it's going forth in his might, and the land had rest for 40 years. So he says, uh, let all thine enemies perish. This is the last part. Everybody else, let them perish, but those that, that, that love them, let them flourish. And because that happened, because God gave them the victory, look what it says, and the land had rest for 40 years, Nothing happened. A couple of generations come through. Nothing happened because God was there. They served God. They, they, Deborah and Barak, they, they praised God. They led the children of Israel. And they did wonderful things because they were on the Lord's side. My brothers and sisters, when we're on the Lord's side, we can do wonderful things as well. But we have to stay in line with God. We have to walk in the ways of God and do the things that are pleasing in the eyesight of God. This is a great story of how, in this Bible, of how the children of Israel didn't have any weapons. And the Canaanites and the Philistines came to make war on them. But because God was with them, they was able to gain the victory. They was able to be victorious. And that's a word for us, that when we're on the Lord's side, we can do great things in the Lord. Amen. And, and it says, and it ended with, and the land had rest for 40 years. Nothing happened to them because they did what God said for them to do. My brothers and sisters, that's what we need to do. We need to line up with the word of God and do what God says for us to do. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in uh, uh, as we go forth in this book of Judges. We'll, we'll see, we'll see the children of Israel. The land had rest for 40 years. But as we go forth, we'll continue to see the cycle that they're in. They will adhere to the word of God, but then there'll come a time when they will turn their back on God again. Things will start to happen with them. And then they'll cry out unto the Lord, and the Lord would hear their cries, and he would come and rescue them. All through this book of Judges, you'll see that same, very same cycle with the children of Israel. Much like a lot of us today, we, we, we can't really get mad at them or stand in judgment of them, just learn from their mistakes because a lot of us are the same way. 
God blesses us and we start doing what's right and then we forget the blessings of God and start going back to our old ways. And things start to go wrong and we call on God. And he's such a loving and caring God that in spite of what we do, he still loves us, he still cares about us, and he takes care of us. So God bless you. Thank you for tuning in and be with us. Father, we thank you. And we pray, God, that you just continue to be with us, walk with us, and talk with us. Guide us through your word, Father, that we don't make these same mistakes. Father, we just love you and we thank you. Bless this church called Friendship. For it is in your son Jesus' name I do pray and I thank God. And amen.